Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into Fino Field here in Milford, Massachusetts, as Milford TV is delighted to bring you this presentation of Milford High School Athletics. This afternoon, it is the Milford Scarlet Hawks High School baseball team getting their 2015 season underway and getting it started here on their home turf at Fino Field, taking on the visiting Mansfield Hornets of the Kelly Rex Division within the Hockamock League. Milford, of course, a resident of the Davenport Division, so a little Hockamock League crossover matchup here in this first game of the 2015 regular season, a season that at times, no doubt, people were wondering if it was ever going to get underway. The snow on the ground for a long time, a long, hard winter, but finally behind us, the snow is, has melted, as you can see, and conditions here at Fino pretty darn good considering the winter we went through and the team's just finishing up their warm-ups, excited to get this game underway. I've had a chance to talk to Coach Pellegrini at length heading up to this season. The team very anxious to get the season started. A lot of expectations as usual on the Scarlet Hawks team making the playoffs for the 36th consecutive year last year, looking to make it 37 years in a row as they get this 2015 campaign started. We will bring you the lineups and the first pitch when we come back here on Milford TV. And we welcome you right back inside Fino Field. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just moments away from getting this first game of the 2015 regular season underway. I am Tim Coet, happy to be on the broadcast for you for Milford TV. Rob O'Keefe also here on the broadcast today, serving as a cameraman wandering out along the third baseline. And right now, the two head coaches for these two teams going over the ground rules with the umpiring crew as we get closer to the start of game time, the head coach for the Milford Scarlet Hawks is Paul Pellegrini. And before the first pitch is thrown in this game, we will bring you the starting lineups for these two squads. We will start with the visitors. That is the Mansfield Hornets leading off and playing left field is number four, Tanner Haggis. Batting second is the shortstop, number five, Michael Bowen. In the third spot is the right fielder, number 22, Will Kelleher. In the cleanup spot is the catcher, Mike Arnold, with Matt Carafa, the third baseman, number seven, batting fifth. In the sixth spot is number 13, Jared Collins. He is the designated hitter in this Mansfield lineup. Batting seventh is the first baseman, number 42, Tyrone Pasquale. Batting eighth is the second baseman, number two, Brandon Nevius. And batting ninth and playing center field, is number 12, Charlie DeMossi, the starting pitcher this afternoon for the Mansfield Hornets is number 15, Evan Kershaw. And for your hometown, Milford Scarlet Hawks, their lineup looks like this. Leading it off is the shortstop, number one, Tommy Thomas. Batting second is the second baseman, number 12, Drew Wild. Batting third and playing right field is number 27, Blake Hill. In the cleanup spot is the catcher, number 18, Jeff Basazi. Batting fifth and playing third base is number 11, Aiden Wild. Batting sixth is the left fielder, number 15, Griffin Lynch. Playing first base and batting seventh is number nine, Anthony Mazzini. Playing center field and batting eighth is number 16, Pete Schuler. And in the ninth spot is this afternoon's starting pitcher for the Scarlet Hawks, number four, Alex Croto. And again, it looks like we are just moments away from seeing a first pitch. All of the business behind home plate has concluded. And I know these two teams, again, are very excited to finally be outside and getting ready to play some baseball. It has been a tough go of it trying to get the teams ready to go for the spring sports season. I know Coach Pellegrini was certainly grateful to have the Milford Sports Center at his disposal. The team doing some extensive drills there throughout the last several weeks. But the cold, damp, and snowy weather has finally subsided, and we certainly could not have asked for a better day to get this Scarlet Hawks regular season underway. We're just under 70 degrees here at game time. Bright, sunny skies, not a cloud overhead here at Fino Field. As Milford now has taken the field for the first time. And Alex Croto wearing number four. The righty starter getting his warm-up tosses into his battery mate, Jeff Basazi. Of course, this field here, Fino Field, when last we saw a game played here at Fino, it was a memorable one. It was the championship game of the 2014 state tournament for 
Massachusetts Legion baseball and what a moment it was for the Legion team from here in Milford. Post 59 coming away with a victory over Newburyport to claim their second straight state championship, of course, en route to another memorable performance in the Northeast Regional Tournament in which they made it all the way to the championship game there as well. But Legion time still a few months away, but the high school baseball season is officially at hand. The first batter for the Mansfield Hornets stepping in to the on-deck circle as Alex Croto finishes up his warm-up tosses. It was a 10 and 11 finish for the Scarlet Hawks back in 2014. Again, it was a record good enough to get them into the postseason, but a transition year by some standards. Not quite seeing what people have been accustomed to seeing out of the Scarlet Hawks team. That was the talk amongst the community, but Coach Pellegrini very happy with what he saw out of his team. And he's very excited about this squad. A lot of returning players here. Certainly the heart of the order is going to look very familiar to Scarlet Hawks fans. Drew Wild, Blake Hill, and Jeff Fasazi. All back with this team again. And again, you can already hear the chatter ramping up. As we are ready to go, we are ready to see a first pitch here at Fino Field as the first batter for the Mansfield Hornets, Tanner Haggis, steps into the box. Haggis digs in on the right side, about to see the first pitch of the season from Alex Croto. He goes into his windup. Here is the pitch. And it is in there for a called strike one. Baseball has returned here in Milford, Massachusetts. Croto ready to deal another. Here's the pitch. It's too far inside. And the count evens up at a ball and a strike. Haggis, the left fielder for the Mansfield Hornets. Ready to see a 1-1 pitch. Now he takes a swing, grounds it right back to the mound, handled cleanly by Croto. He takes it halfway to first base before slinging it underhand style over to Anthony Mazzini for the first out of this top of the first inning. One to three on the grounder. Defensively, the Scarlet Hawks look like this. It's Jeff Basazi behind the plate. Aiden Wild at third base, Tommy Thomas at short, Drew Wild at second, and Anthony Mazzini at first. Left to right in the outfield, Griffin Lynch, Pete Schuler, and Blake Hill. One down in this top of the first inning. Now here's Michael Bowen, the shortstop. Takes a pitch low, and he's quickly ahead in the count. Two balls and no strikes. They play deep up the middle as Croto fires the 2-0 pitch. That is low. Three balls and no strikes now the count. Croto a deep breath. He kicks and deals, and that one right down the middle for a called strike. Three and one now the count. We mentioned the head coach for the Scarlet Hawks is Paul Pellegrini. Head coach for Mansfield is Joe Breen. As this pitch is lined out to center field in a couple of steps at first, but eventually tracking it down was Pete Schuler. Not getting a perfect read on that ball off the bat, but Schuler has certainly demonstrated a lot of speed over the course of the two previous sports seasons we've seen so far here from Milford High School Athletics and using his speed out there in center field to track down that fly ball and quickly there's two away in the top of the first. As Croto will start off behind in the count to his second consecutive batter, this time the right fielder Will Kelleher. The 1-0 pitch, that one high. Basazi coming up out of the crouch to snag that one from behind the left side batter's box, and it's a two ball, no strike count. That one drops in on the outside edge. Now two and one, we are scoreless here with two away, and the base is empty in the top of the first inning. Croto ready to deal another pitch, and it's a called strike two. 
Two balls, two strikes, and two outs here in the top of the first. Mike Arnold, the catcher, waiting on deck. Here's the pitch. And that one misses wide. And that will run the count full. Scoreboard here at Fino Field, not quite operational yet this early on the year, but we'll keep you updated on all of the stats as the 3-2 pitch drops in there for a called strike three. Kelleher was ready to head down to first base, but got the bad news from the home plate umpire. It's the first strikeout of the game for Alex Croto, and it's a 1-2-3 top of the first for the Scarlet Hawks. They will take their first swings of the 2015 season when we return here on coverage of Milford High School Baseball here on Milford TV. An impressive start to this game for Alex Croto as he dispatches the Hornets lineup 1-2-3 in the top half of this inning, and now the Scarlet Hawks will step to the box for the first time this season. Tommy Thomas getting it started for this Scarlet Hawks lineup. He steps in on the right side. Thomas, the starting shortstop in the game this afternoon. Now the starting pitcher, Evan Kershaw for Mansfield, ready to go. And his first pitch is fouled away up over the backstop and over the press box and out of play for strike one. The righty back into his windup. Here's the pitch off the end of the bat. It's grounded to first base, played cleanly there by Tyrone Pasquale, who takes it to the bag himself for the first out here in the bottom of the first. Three unassisted on the play. And defensively, Mansfield looks like this. Mike Arnold behind the plate with Matt Carafa at third, Michael Bowen at short, Brandon Nevius at second, and Tyrone Pasquale at first. Left to right in the outfield, Tanner Haggis, Charlie DeMasi, and Will Kelleher. As now Drew Wild steps in and he takes a pitch that misses for ball one. And now ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. Drew Wild, one of the two captains for this 2015 Scarlet Hawks team, Jeff Basazi, his co captain. The 2 0 pitch, this is lined right to third base, snagged there by Carafa. That one hit pretty well by Drew Wild, but. Well placed was Carafa on the left side of the infield to make the catch. Two away and the base is empty for Blake Hill. In his sophomore season with the Scarlet Hawks. And boy, has he had an impressive start to his high school career, making an impact on this team last year making solid contributions to the Scarlet Hawks football team as well and was also a big part of Milford's Legion baseball team last summer. All of the coaches expecting great things out of Blake Hill as his high school career continues on. He hits that one hard foul to the backstop and the count goes to two and one. Should the inning continue, it would be the captain Jeff Basazi who would come up next. Evan Kershaw into his windup here is the 2-1 pitch. This is hit down the right field line, and that's going to get down for a fair ball. Fielded out there by Kelleher, a wide turn at first base for Blake Hill before he retreats to the first base bag. But a solid single for Blake Hill with two outs here in the bottom of the first. There is our first hit of the 2015 season. And it puts a man on for Basazi. Basazi very confident in the makeup of this 2015 Scarlet Hawks team. We had a chance to talk to Coach Pellegrini along with Jeff Basazi and Drew Wild in a baseball preview we brought to you on the Milford Informer just a couple of weeks back. That preview is available for viewing on our YouTube channel. Just check out My Milford TV on YouTube. Basazi quickly down in the count. Hill takes his lead off of first base as that pitch misses high and wide for a ball. Kershaw sets at the belt. This pitch, did he hold up? No, he did not. 
A strikeout of Jeff Basazi to end the inning, so Blake Hill stranded at first base. We are through one full inning of play here from Fino, and we are scoreless as we bring you Milford High School Baseball here on Milford TV. Batters four, five, and six coming up for the Hornets as we start inning number two here from Fino Field. Alex Croto back out on the mound for his second inning of work. Had a nice quick top of the first. He will face Mike Arnold, the catcher, to start things off for the Hornets offense. Here's the first pitch of the inning. And it misses high for ball one. Croto into the windup. Here's the 1-0 pitch. That drops in for a called strike. It was a pretty one-sided matchup when these two teams met up back in the 2014 season. A big 10 to nothing victory for Mansfield over the Scarlet Hawks as this one is grounded towards the hole between shortstop and third base. It was mishandled at first by Aiden Wild. Still opted to sling it over to first base. A questionable decision, but Mazzini is able to keep it on the infield. But nonetheless, Arnold is able to reach. It was a good rangy play by Wild, curious if he had left that for his shortstop if it would have been a little more conventional play. But Wild could not play it cleanly. Not a routine play by any means for the Milford third baseman. That allows a leadoff base runner here for the Hornets. The first pitch in to Matt Carafa misses for a ball. Arnold now leads off of first base. Croto's 1-0 pitch. This is lined out to shallow right center field. That gets down for a hit. Left center field, excuse me. And this will put two on quickly with nobody out. That one just looped up over the infield. It dropped in front of both Griffin Lynch and Pete Schuler out there in left center field. And the Hornets are in business now here in the second inning. Back-to-back -back base hits. Runners at first and second base now for the DH, Jared Collins. Croto starts off ahead in the count this time with a called strike one. Both Mansfield and Milford ended the regular season last year with identical 10 and 11 records, each making it into their respective playoff bracket in the MIAA tournament. Nothing in two now the count. Mansfield operating out of the Division I South bracket, Milford out of Division II South. Both runners leading off of first and second. The 0-2 pitch, that is waved at and missed. First base occupied, so despite the fact that Basazi did not handle that initially, no chance to reach at first base, so a big strikeout right there for Alex Croto. Brings the first out of the second inning, keeps the runners in place at first and second now for the first baseman. Tyrone Pasquale, full name Tyrone Pasquale Frederick. And he takes the first pitch for a called strike one. The 0-1 pitch waved at and missed. So Croto trying to battle back in this inning after allowing two base runners. Nothing into the count to Pasquale with the number eight hitter waiting on deck. A check down to second base. Now he fires to the plate. This is hit on the ground to shortstop. Could be two. The shuffle to second base out there. The throw to first is in time for the inning ending double play. Nicely turned by the Milford infield. Six to four to three ends the inning. And we remain scoreless as we head now on to the bottom half of the second inning here at Fino Field. Coverage of Milford High School Baseball here on Milford TV. Well, Tommy Thomas starting the six to four to three inning ending double play to conclude the top half of the second inning. What started out as a potential run scoring threat for Mansfield, two on with nobody out. They are unable to push a run across. 
Now Kershaw back out on the mound to face batters five, six, and seven. Out of the Scarlet Hawks lineup, Aiden Wild taking his first at bat of his varsity career. And he sends this one right back up the middle, ranging behind the second base bag as Bowen. He fires to first for the out. Again, a good rangy play displayed by an infielder, this time Michael Bowen, whose athletic prowess is no secret to many in this region. Michael Bowen, a phenomenal player for the Mansfield High School basketball team. So one out, the base is empty, and now this one chopped at the plate, foul by the left fielder Griffin Lynch. Lynch will be leaned on in the starting rotation for this Scarlet Hawks team this year. Griffin Lynch also just recently receiving a pretty prestigious sportsmanship award from the Hockamock League, the MIAA, also the Boston Bruins helping sponsor that award. He was honored at a recent Bruins game. As that ball makes its way in there for a called strike. Lynch the righty bat ready. Here's the pitch. That one too far outside. Kershaw winds and deals. This one hit out towards right center field. That gets down for a hit. It could be extra bases as this rolls towards the deep fence out there. And it will be a stand up double for Griffin Lynch. There's our first extra base hit of the season. As Lynch pulls up at second base, a nice piece of hitting to the opposite field. And now a man on ahead of Anthony Mazzini. Mazzini playing first base today. Takes the first pitch for a ball. Mazzini heading into the season. Talked about playing the middle infield spots, but over there at first base today, he chops one foul. Of course, Anthony Mazzini helping us out from time to time on our sports broadcasts here on Milford TV. You may have heard him doing play-by-play -play for the hockey team's red and white game to conclude their season. Also helped us out on some of our Varsity basketball coverage over the course of the winter sports season. But Anthony down on the playing field for the baseball season. We certainly wish him a lot of success. Lynch taking his lead off of second base. Here's the pitch. It's up high. Three balls and one strike. The count on Anthony Mazzini. We are still scoreless. Here with one out in the bottom of the second inning. Here's the pitch. This is chopped down the third baseline foul. And that will run the count full. Kershaw looks into his battery mate, Mike Arnold, for the sign. Checks down to second base. Now the payoff pitch. It's hit on the ground towards third base, in and out of the glove of Carafa, and Mazzini will reach. That one much more of a routine play than what we saw for Aiden Wild in the top half of this inning, so that should go as an error on Carafa. So the E5 puts runners at first and second base. Two men on with one out in the inning, and here is Pete Schuler. Right. Schuler swings at the first pitch and drives it foul down the right field line. Pete Schuler, a athlete for all seasons, a standout wide receiver for the Scarlet Hawks football team. Was part of the top two scoring lines on the Scarlet Hawks hockey team this past winter, and now 
suiting up with the baseball team. He's down in the count here, nothing in two. Griffin Lynch takes his lead off of second. Mazzini a short lead off of first. Here's the 0-2 pitch, it's up high. Schuler doesn't chase. Here comes the 1-2 pitch now up high again. Schuler battling back in the count now. Two balls and two strikes with one down in the inning. Now it is Milford threatening to push across the first run of the season. Here's the next pitch, low and away. And from 0-2 now to three balls and two strikes. With the pitcher waiting on deck. We'll see if the runners get a head start. They hold as the pitch is swung on and missed, so a good call there. Not sending the runners. Schuler strikes out swinging, second K of the game for Evan Kershaw. Two outs now, and it's up to Alex Croto to try to help his own cause at the plate. Croto takes the first pitch for a called strike one. Alex Croto, another member of this high school squad that went on to play for the Legion team last summer. Worked primarily out of the bullpen. Two men on with two outs as this pitch is tapped foul at the plate. Two strikes now on the batter. So Evan Kershaw for the Mansfield Hornets looking to end Milford's threat right here. Two outs in the bottom of the second inning. Here's the pitch. That one just misses. Close pitch. Alex Croto may be fortunate to still be standing in the batter's box. This time, a swing and a miss. And so Kershaw gets the strikeout anyway. Back-to-back -back Ks to end the inning. And we are through two full innings of play now from Fino Field, still scoreless, as we bring you coverage of Scarlet Hawks baseball here on Milford TV. Both sides had their chances in the second inning. Getting two men on base, but neither squad able to capitalize, so we play on scoreless as we enter the top of the third inning. Alex Croto will face batters 8, 9, and 1 in the Hornets lineup. As he starts off with the ball to the second baseman, Brandon Nevius. The 1-0 pitch misses as well. This Mansfield team looking for some new players to step up offensively as that pitch drops in for a strike to bring the count to two and one. Graduating a lot of the key contributors offensively from a season ago. The count now evened up at two and two. Zach Courier leading the team in batting average a year ago at 413, drove in 18 runs was really the centerpiece of this lineup, gone to graduation as that pitch is waved at and missed. They throw down to first base, a bit of a high throw from Basazi, but handled by Mazzini, he taps the bag to complete the putout. It goes as the third strikeout of the game for Alex Croto, each pitcher now with three Ks. Now here's the number nine man, Charlie Damasi, playing center field. Takes the first pitch for a called strike one. Now taps a pitch foul. It rolls over towards the on-deck circle for the visitors. Milford occupying the third base dugout with Mansfield down the first baseline. Not the 
setup we're used to, at least for the Legion season. Milford teams usually using the first base dugout as this pitch is hit a ton out to left field, but that one twists foul and out of play. Pretty good showing of fans here for the first game of the season. A lot of them collected over in the pavilion area in front of the concession stand, which I do believe is closed. As that pitch misses inside, fans eager to start to see some baseball action here in Milford. As this pitch is hit off the end of the bat on a couple of hops to second base, fielded there by Drew Wild. He throws it to first for the out, two down now in the top of the third. Back up to the top of the lineup now, second time through we go, and Tanner Haggis, who grounded out to the pitcher in his first at bat, he comes up for the second time. Croto winds and deals, his first pitch inside and low for ball one. Too far inside again, two balls and no strikes the count. Scoreless here with two outs and the bases empty in the top of the third as this one is hit on the ground towards shortstop. Waiting for it is Thomas, he'll have to hustle the throw but he gets it there in time for the out that ends the inning. The six to three ground out ends it, it's another one, two, three inning for Alex Croto. We head to the home half of the third, it is Milford zero and Mansfield zero here on coverage of Scarlet Hawks baseball on Milford TV. Back up to the top of the Scarlet Hawks lineup as we begin the bottom half of the third inning. Tim Coet here on the call for Milford TV. Scoreless between Milford and Mansfield in this opening game of the 2015 season for both of these squads. As Tommy Thomas takes the first pitch of the inning for ball one. 2-0 now the count. Thomas grounded out to first in his first at bat of the game. Way ahead in the count now, three balls and no strikes. First game of the season here at Fino Field, the first game of the season going on up at Fenway Park as well. Hearing there have been positive results up there at Fenway so far in that game. Tommy Thomas taking all the way, he took strike one. Here's the 3-1 pitch, it's popped foul and out of play and the count runs full. It's been a pretty steady wind blowing in from the outfield ever since we got down to the field earlier this afternoon. Here's the 3-2 pitch, it's hit on the ground towards second base, fielded there by Nevius. He throws to first for the first out here in the bottom of the third. Brings up Drew Wild. He made solid contact back in the bottom of the first inning, but lined it right into the waiting glove of Matt Carafa at third base. First pitch of this at bat, a looping breaking ball that stays upstairs for ball one. Now outside and low, two balls and no strikes to count. right at the bottom of the zone to bring the count to two balls and one strike on the captain and starting second baseman, Drew Wild. And that one just grabs a piece of the outside edge. Now it evens up the count at two. Drew Wild, the leading goal scorer for the Scarlet Hawks hockey team during the winter sports season. It's this pitch. Off the end of the bat, foul and into the trees beyond left field. Continues on with a count of two balls and two strikes with one out and the base is empty here in the bottom of the third inning. Evan Kershaw's next pitch 
is hit in the air out to left field towards the line. Haggis running over, but that one again will make its way out of play. Drew Wild sets up inside in that batter's box. Now sends it down the left field line again. This time a fair ball. It's boxed around out there by Haggis, and that will allow Drew Wild to cruise into second base. Finally keeping it between the lines, he drops that one in for a base hit, and then the bobble. That should go as a base hit and an error on the left fielder. Putting a one out runner in scoring position ahead of Blake Hill. Hill digs in on the left side, takes a swing at the first pitch and drives it out to right center field, settling underneath is Demasi. He makes the catch, tagging up at second base and moving on to third is Drew Wild. Now this ball is gonna roll away and into the Milford dugout and that will allow Drew Wild to come around and score. So not exactly textbook defense out of the corner outfielders for Mansfield. The error allowing Wild to get into scoring position and there was certainly no question that Drew Wild was going to make it to third base after that catch was made but the throw bouncing through to third base, rolling away from the third baseman Carafa into the dugout. And that allows Wild to come around and score and Milford takes a one to nothing lead. Two outs in the inning now for Jeff Basazi. Here's the pitch that misses outside. And a quick three balls and no strike count on the starting catcher. And taking all the way, a quick four pitch walk. That is the first walk issued for Evan Kershaw in the game. And now Kershaw meeting up on the pitcher's mound with catcher Mike Arnold. Kershaw giving up an unearned run so far in this inning. <laughs> Jeff Basazi now at first base after the walk and that gives Aiden Wild a chance. He takes the first pitch for strike one. Aiden Wild grounded out to shortstop in his first at bat. Definitely a lot of promise for Aiden Wild, just a freshman making the varsity hockey team, now making the varsity baseball team. Just a great na natural athlete as Basazi takes off for second base. A bit of an awkward slide into second, but the throw got away. So Basazi reaches with the first stolen base of the season and getting some accolades from the Milford dugout. Everyone all smiles after that stolen base. It puts the catcher in scoring position as Aiden Wild takes a called strike. Two outs in the inning, a man in scoring position. A run already home from Milford as this pitch is lined up over the glove of Carafa at third base. They will wave Jeff Basazi to the plate. Here comes the throw. It's there in plenty of time. And Basazi is out. He was waved in all the way. That ball just glanced off the fingertips of the glove of Carafa. It rolled really just into the deep shortstop position. But Milford takes the chance with two outs to wave the runner home, and he is gunned down at the plate. So Milford settles for just one run in the inning. But after three full innings of play, it is the Scarlet Hawks who take a one to nothing lead over the Mansfield Hornets here on coverage of Scarlet Hawks baseball here on Milford TV. So not exactly a textbook inning back in the bottom of the third. 
A couple of errors for Mansfield lead to a run scored. And also for Milford, the base running. A bit of an adventure to end the inning as Jeff Basazi was thrown out at home plate after a single just barely trickled to the edge of the infield dirt after it glanced off the glove of the third baseman. But when all is said and done, Milford takes a one to nothing lead over Mansfield who send batters two, three, and four to the plate. A called strike in now to Michael Bowen. Bowen flew out to center field his first time up. Waves and misses at the pitch. Two strikes on the batter. Here's the pitch. It's swung on and missed for strike three. Fourth K now for Alex Croto. And that brings up Kelleher, one of the strikeout victims for Alex Croto. His K came back in the top of the first inning. Here's the first pitch of the at bat. And it drops in for strike one. It seems like Croto has really gotten into a rhythm after that rocky second inning. He's helped out by the double play to end that inning. And he's retired all four batters he's faced since. Here's a ground ball to shortstop, fielded by Thomas. The throw, it gets away from Mazzini at first base, rolls up the line. And Kelleher will stop at second base. So that breaks up the string of retired batters. An errant throw by the shortstop, Thomas. A runner at second base now with one down for the cleanup hitter, Mike Arnold. Arnold one for one in the game with a single. First pitch just misses for ball one. Croto spins off the mound, but nobody covering second base, just bluffing the runner back. We're in the top of the fourth inning here at Fino Field, a one to nothing lead for Milford, but Mansfield now with the tying run in scoring position. As Croto misses with the pitch to fall behind two and oh. The wind gusting again across the field as Croto delivers his 2-0 pitch. That misses as well. The 3-0 pitch on the way, not close, and a four-pitch walk. Puts men at first and second with one out, and the third baseman, Matt Carafa, coming to the plate. So for Mike Arnold, that's now his second time on base already today. Arnold and Carafa went back to back with singles to lead off the second inning. But neither were able to score. And there's a strike out of Croto as he starts off ahead against Carafa. Runners lead off of first and second base. Croto's 0-1 pitch is swung on and missed. Carafa late on the swing. Croto looking for strikeout number five. He would love to get it right here. Here's the 0-2 pitch. That stays upstairs. Not enticing for Carafa to chase up around the eye level. The count now one and two. This one off the end of the bat down the first baseline, but a foul ball. Movie stars, come on. Carafa only appeared in five games 
for the Mansfield Hornets last season. Pops this pitch up foul and out of play. Only had four at bats back during the 2014 regular season. Had a walk and a couple of strikeouts, did not register a hit on the year. Another one two pitch. This is hit hard towards shortstop. A rangy play by Thomas, but he has no play anywhere. In all likelihood, saved a run by keeping that ball on the infield, but. He had to go all out into the dive and could not get to his feet in time to make a throw to any base. So it's an infield single for Carafa, who now has two hits in 2015 in his first two at-bats. A golden opportunity here for the Hornets as they have the bases loaded with only one out. A hard ground ball to first base in and out of the glove of Mazzini. He'll go home with it. And safe is the call. Coach Pellegrini not happy with the call. It was a forced play at the plate. So the home plate umpire apparently saying that Basazi didn't maintain contact with home plate or the runner was able to slide in there just ahead of the throw. Coach Pellegrini still putting up an argument, but to no avail. Jared Collins, the DH, reaches on the fielder's choice. Kelleher comes in to score the tying run, and the bases are reloaded. Still one out in the inning, now tied one apiece. The timeout called now as the home plate umpire and infield umpire having a bit of a dialogue across the field. Everything's situated now as Tyrone Pasquale settles in on the right side. The first pitch from Croto misses for ball one. A Mansfield runner at every base, the 1-0 pitch. In for a called strike. Pasquale grounded into that inning ending double play back in the second. Croto would love to see the same thing happen here in the fourth. But misses outside and low with that pitch to bring the count to two balls and one strike with one out in the inning. Next one chopped foul, it ends up over where the coaching staff was set up for Milford. Two balls and two strikes with one out in the inning. All three runners take their lead. Here's the pitch outside. Lunging towards the left side batter's box was Basazi. So big pitch coming up here, three and two the count. Nowhere to put Pasquale, here's the pitch. And it's in there for a called strike three. Pasquale knew it right away. A big pitch from Alex Croto, his second strikeout of the inning. It freezes the base runners in place for now. And a chance for Croto to get out of the inning with minimal damage, but first he has to deal with the number eight hitter, Brandon Nevius, the second baseman who struck out swinging back in the third inning. Top of the fourth inning, two outs, the base is loaded, a run home for Mansfield to tie it. And fooled badly on the first pitch was Nevius for a swinging strike one. Arnold the runner at third, Carafa the runner at second, Collins the runner at first. And that pitch just misses. One ball and one strike on Brandon Nevius. Here's the pitch, waved at and missed again. And 
It does not look like Nevis has been having an easy time picking up the pitches out of the hand of Alex Croto. Here comes the one-two pitch, and it's popped up. On the right side of the infield, it's Mazzini who settles underneath, in and out of the glove, and the run will score. A lazy pop-up on the infield, but Anthony Mazzini could not squeeze it in the glove. It bounces out, and that allows the go-ahead run to score. It's the second error of the inning. Keeps the bases loaded, gives Mansfield the two to one lead, and now a first pitch strike into Charlie DeMossi. Now a ground ball foul down the third base line. Both runs in this inning have been unearned. Here's the 0-2 pitch. This one roped foul over towards the fans. A lot of fans, again, in that small section of bleachers in front of the concession stand area here at Fino Field. Also some sprinkled in behind the plate and down the first base line. Another 0-2 pitch coming up with the bases loaded in the dirt, blocked. The runner moves up to second base, so my mistake, two runs coming home on that pop-up play. And now this ball hit out into left field for a base hit. Two more runs are going to come home to score. And this inning could have been over with just one run allowed, but the floodgates have now opened for Mansfield. Damasi comes through with an RBI base hit. So now the lone runner is at first base. As five runs have come home to score in the inning now for Mansfield. The runner immediately takes off. The pitch is a strike. The throw down to second base gets past the glove of Drew Wild out into center field. No further advance for Damasi. In with a stolen base. A five to one lead now for Mansfield. As this pitch is looped out into shallow center field, it gets over the head of Drew Wild in front of the center fielder, Schuler, who sends the throw home, but much too late as Damasi is able to come around to score from second base. An RBI single for Tanner Haggis. And it is now a six to one lead. And the sounds of some action starting to warm up now in the bullpen area for the Scarlet Hawks. As now the 10th batter of the inning will come up, Michael Bowen, who led this inning off with a strikeout. Now up for the second time, he waves and misses at a pitch. It's amazing how quickly your fortunes can turn around coming into this inning. Alex Croto really cruising. Michael Bowen looking for his first hit of the game. Bats with Tanner Haggis aboard at first. Swings and misses. Now one ball and two strikes the count. The 
Pitch from Croto, swung on and missed for strike three. It's the second strikeout of the inning, bookending the inning for Michael Bowen, but in the middle, a couple of costly errors defensively for Milford. It opens the door for a big inning offensively for the Mansfield Hornets. They score six runs to take a six to one lead over the Milford Scarlet Hawks here on coverage of Milford High School Baseball on Milford TV. Bottom of the fourth inning now, the Scarlet Hawks with some work to do at the plate. And first pitch swinging, a line drive base hit for Griffin Lynch. Already his second hit of the game to go along with a double back in the second inning. The Scarlet Hawks were last at the plate. They had a one to nothing lead. It looked as though they were at least going to be in the midst of a 1-1 tie when they came back up to the plate here in the bottom of the fourth, but unfortunately the man at the plate, Anthony Mazzini, with a very costly dropped pop-up at first base that allowed two runs to score and ultimately allowed what became a six-run rally for the Mansfield Hornets. Mazzini now up with a one ball, one strike count. He bats with Griffin Lynch at first base. They check on Lynch. Back with a head first slide. Evan Kershaw now with a five run lead to work with. His next pitch into Mazzini misses and the count goes to two and one. Seems like the crowd here at Fino has continued to grow as the game has gone on. Here's a ground ball snagged by Kershaw on the way by. He throws to second for the out there. The throw on to first, and it is a double play. A 1-4-3 double play turned by Mansfield. That clears the bases. Two outs now in the inning for Pete Schuler. Schuler takes the first pitch for ball one. Now Schuler with a line drive out into right center field. That gets down for a hit. Schuler's first hit of the day. So the double play costly as Milford has squared up a couple of pitches pretty well against Kershaw in this inning. Lynch with the leadoff single, but a race on the double play. And now Schuler stands aboard at first base with two outs. The throw over to first and just getting the fingertips back on the bag. Well, it's Schuler. They had him leaning in the wrong direction. The throw is a little bit out in front of the first base bag for Pasquale to field. And that allowed Schuler to get back in just safely. He takes off now. The pitch is swung on and missed. The throw is well to the second base side of the bag. It's a stolen base for Schuler. It was Nevius coming over from his positioning in between the first and second base bag to field the throw, his body going away from where the throw ended up. The ball ended up out in center field, but no further advance from Schuler, who now stands at second base. Milford looking to respond in some way here in this inning. As Alex Croto, the pitcher, takes one low. He struck out swinging to end the bottom of the second. Now the spin off the mound and the throw into second base. It again trickles through. Schuler and the shortstop ended up getting tangled up on top of the bag. The ball ended up in the glove of Brandon Nevius. But Schuler immediately springs back out to a lead as another one misses. Three balls and one strike, the count on Croto. Looking to get on to turn the lineup over. Here's the pitch. 
It's hit foul, a lot of play off to the right. Six to one the score, Mansfield with the lead. Milford looking for some two out magic here. Here's the pitch into Croto. it's hit underneath the glove of both the first and second baseman out into right field. Here comes Schuler to the plate. The throw is up over the head of the catcher and that will allow Croto to make his way into second base. We've seen a couple of questionable throwing decisions out in the outfield for Mansfield. That one the latest. So it's an RBI single for Alex Croto. It's credited with an RBI, an error on the right fielder allows Croto to get into scoring position. So that's already the fourth error of the day for Mansfield. Two errors on the Milford side. As the conference takes place on the mound between head coach Joe Breen and his starting pitcher. And again, it's unfortunate for Milford. They hit into the double play earlier in this inning or else they would really be in business. As it is now, they've cut it to a 6-2 score. Another runner in scoring position now for Tommy Thomas looking for his first hit of the game. He lifts a fly ball and foul ground down the right field line, but that will move well foul. Thomas has grounded out to first and grounded out to second in his first two plate appearances. Here's a 1-1 pitch up high. Lead at second base for Alex Croto. As the pitch is fouled away again to even the count at two and two. The fans take a look as that ball made its way out towards the parking lot. Two balls, two strikes, two outs in the inning. A runner leading off of second base for Milford. Here's the pitch into Tommy Thomas inside, underneath the chin, and it runs the count full. Payoff pitch on the way to Thomas. It's chopped towards third base, fielded by Carafa. He needs to hustle the throw. And it gets there just in time. A nice stretch by Tyrone Pasquale. One of the taller first basemen you'll see. He used his height to his advantage there to maintain contact with the first base bag. So Milford strands a runner at second base. They do get one run back. And as we head to inning number five, it is Mansfield six and Milford two here on coverage of Scarlet Hawks baseball on Milford TV. Six runs on five hits with four errors for Mansfield. Two runs, seven hits and a pair of errors for the Milford Scarlet Hawks as we get set to begin inning number five here at Fino Field. And a new pitcher on for the Scarlet Hawks as Brian Ireland comes on. And his first pitch is grounded to deep shortstop, fielded there, no throw, as that one was deep in the hole. Looks like some additional defensive changes, I believe. That is Aiden Wild now at shortstop. With Tommy Thomas moving over to third base, so it looks like just a positional swap between those two. With Brian Ireland now on the mound, he gives up a leadoff single to Will Kelleher. The 
This pitch has popped up out into shallow center field, ranging in is Pete Schuler, almost at the edge of the infield dirt where he makes the catch. So Mike Arnold is retired, remaining at first base now with one down is Kelleher. It was Will Kelleher who hit the ground ball to deep short. Reaching on that infield single. He's at the first base bag now with one down ahead of Matt Carafa now, the third baseman, up for the third time. So far a two for two day, a pair of singles, also a run scored. Lifts a fly ball up over the backstop and out of play. A 1-0 count with a man on and a man out here in the top of the fifth. When lofted foul and out of play again. Oh, and two the count as the righty relief pitcher Brian Ireland stares in for the sign. Now comes to the set, the pitch. High. The count goes to one and two. An even count of two balls and two strikes. Matt Carafa hanging tough, a number of foul balls, all of them lofted up and over the press box. And the count remains two balls and two strikes. Again, Kelleher gets out to a Short lead at first base as this one is chopped over towards third base. Played there by Thomas. He bobbles it and has no play. So getting his first chance. Now shifting over to third base. And we see another error on the Milford infield. Puts runners at first and second base with one out in the inning. And now the DH Jared Collins comes to the plate. He reached on a fielder's choice with the bases loaded back in the fourth inning. Hit a ground ball to Anthony Mazzini who threw home after a very brief bobble. It was a bang bang play at the plate. But the umpire ruling that Kelleher slid in just ahead of that throw. Now turning to Bunt, he immediately pulls the bat head back and takes a strike. Collins a strikeout in his first at bat earlier this afternoon. Hard bluff at second base as Ireland tries to grab that ground ball with the bare hand. It trickles out towards shortstop and everyone will be safe. Always a dangerous play. You know it's just instinct for the pitcher to throw that bare hand out there to try to make the play, but certainly would be better off letting that ball go through, especially with the shortstop lined up to make the play. Instead, now everyone is safe. And another base is loaded. Opportunity for the Mansfield Hornets. It's Collins at first, Carafa at second, and Kelleher at third with one out. And Tyrone Pasquale at the plate. He hits a deep drive out to center field. Looked a little harder off the bat. The catch made out there by the center fielder, Pete Schuler. One run comes in to score, tagging up and moving to third base was Carafa. 
So a sacrifice fly for Tyrone Pasquale. Brings home the seventh run of the day for Mansfield. And they're gonna rule the end of the inning. So a bit of a bizarre end to that inning. Doesn't look like a whole lot of argument being put up on the Mansfield side. Perhaps a runner missed a base. And so it looks like they might have waved off that seventh run. We're going to have to try to get some clarification about that, but all we know right now is that the top of the fifth inning has come to an abrupt end. Milford will take their at bat in the bottom half of this inning when we return here on Milford TV. Continuing to try to sift through exactly what happened to conclude that top of the fifth inning, our best guess as I briefly look down to update my scorecard that they must have ruled that the runner coming to the plate left before the catch was made. So by my best guess, it is still a six to two game. As that inning came to a very quick end, now Drew Wild sends a slow rolling ground ball to shortstop. It gets underneath the glove of Michael Bowen. And Wild will reach to lead things off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Lead man on, and now Blake Hill at the plate. They'll send a quick pickoff throw over at first, and Wild slides back in safely. I suppose you had to come into this game with the understanding that Defensively, these teams might need a little bit of time to really get up to game speed. Not a lot of opportunity to practice outside and go through a lot of defensive drills or really get much experience out on the diamond in general. Fino Field still with snow on the ground probably as soon as about maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago max before the weather finally turned. So I would expect the defense on both sides will get crisper as it goes along. Meanwhile, this is a deep drive out to center field, but chasing it down nicely was Charlie DeMasi, center fielder from Mansfield. He had to get on his horse fairly deep out there in center field, but tracked that ball well, made the catch. Very nice defensive play turned in right there by the Mansfield center fielder. Retires Blake Hill for the first out here in the bottom of the fifth. Drew Wild remains at first base now for Jeff Basazi. He swings at the first pitch and hits it foul. Evan Kershaw still on the mound for the Hornets. Here's the 0-1 pitch, this is hit down the left field line, that's a fair ball. A wide turn at second base for Drew Wild, but he retreats to the bag, played cleanly out there by Tanner Haggis down the line. So Pasazzi reaches for the second straight at bat after a walk back in the third inning. Now gets his first base hit, it puts runners at first and second base with one down for Aiden Wild, who started out the day at third base, has now moved to shortstop. Takes the first pitch high for ball one. There's certainly been no limit to the action we've seen out on the field here in game number one. Milford fans looking now for a comeback at the plate. for trailing six to two. A couple of runners on with one down and Aiden Wild hits this one to shortstop, fielded cleanly there. The throw to second base for one out. They short hop the throw to first base and Aiden Wild will reach safely. Michael Bowen trying to start the potential inning ending 6-4-3 double play, but a bit of a double pump at the second base bag for Brandon Nevius. 
short hop the throw to first base. And Wild reaches on the fielder's choice. So cuts down the middleman. Basazi erased from the bases. Drew Wild moves on to third base. So Drew Wild, the lead runner at third. Aiden Wild, the runner at first. And Griffin Lynch, who is two for two, comes to the plate. Takes the first pitch for ball one. Lynch has looked very comfortable in his first two plate appearances. A double back in the second, a single in the fourth. And now they have the runner in a rundown. Drew Wild between third base and home plate. Continuing to fight through it. Now will slide towards home plate. The tag is applied, and that is the final out of the inning. So a bit of lack of concentration at third base for Drew Wild. He is caught in the rundown, eventually tagged out. And that is the end of the inning, so a potential rally cut down in its tracks. Milford continues to trail 6-2 to two as we head to the late innings here on coverage of Scarlet Hawks baseball on Milford TV. So I have now gotten confirmation down at field level. They did wave off that run from scoring for Mansfield in the top half of the fifth inning, so we can confirm it is still a 6-2 to two score right now as the leadoff hitter for Mansfield here in the top half of the sixth. Brandon Nevius sends a fly ball out to center field. The catch made out there for the first out of the top half of the sixth. Now here is Charlie DeMossi, the center fielder, who made a really nice defensive play in the bottom half of the fifth, robbing Blake Hill of a hit. Tracking it down in deep center field and now hits a sharp ground ball between shortstop and third base for a single. It's his second hit of the day. And a one out base runner as we go again through the lineup for Mansfield, Tanner Haggis comes to the plate. His third hit allowed for Brian Ireland since coming into the game. Ireland now in his second inning of relief after Alex Croto went the first four. The runner takes off for second base. Now stops halfway through, the throw back towards first base. It bounces out of the glove of Mazzini. And now diving into the bag at second safely is Damasi. Boy, have we seen some unconventional plays out there today. Damasi starting down that line towards second base. He froze maybe about a third of the way down after the quick throw from Basazi. Milford sent the throw into Mazzini at first base to try to get the out there, but it popped out of the glove, and that allowed Damasi to ultimately end up down at second base safely. So a runner in scoring position with one out as Ireland delivers a called strike three at the knees, freezing Tanner Haggis. Ireland's first strikeout. the seventh strikeout for Milford pitching on the day. The first six credited to Alex Croto. There's two outs now in this top of the sixth inning. Runner remains at second base ahead of Michael Bowen. Bowen sends a ground ball just foul wide of third base. Two balls and one strike the count. Bowen 0 for 3 on the day. He's struck out in his last two at bats. Takes a breaking ball for a called strike two. Bowen struck out as the first and third outs of that long fourth inning rally. And 
Now sends a ground ball right back to Ireland, who fires it over to first base for the out that ends this top of the sixth inning. No runs come across the plate in the inning for the Hornets. We head into the bottom of the sixth inning. Time running out for the Scarlet Hawks as they trail this game by a score of 6-2 to two here on coverage of Scarlet Hawks baseball on Milford TV. It is once again Griffin Lynch at the plate. He was up with two men on in the bottom half of the fifth inning when Drew Wild was caught stealing to end the inning. Now hits a sharp ground ball to shortstop. A diving play made, but a wild throw to first base. Corralled by Pasquale, which will hold Griffin Lynch at first base. So the throw off the mark from Michael Bowen, and that allows Lynch to reach for the third time today. And now Anthony Mazzini with a ground ball that clanks off the glove of the third baseman, Carafa. And Lynch will just keep going on to third base. And it looks like now they may send Mazzini into second base as that one rolled beyond the field of play. And so the Mansfield infield gift wrapping a potential rally here for the Scarlet Hawks. Griffin Lynch now at third base. Anthony Mazzini at second. And now Pete Schuler at the plate who takes the first pitch high for a ball. Milford looking to climb back into this ball game. Schuler hits a ground ball slowly to shortstop. That will get one run in. A strong, accurate throw this time from Bowen to first base gets Schuler, but he will be credited with an RBI on that 6 to 3 ground out. As in from third base comes Griffin Lynch to score. Mazzini moves up to third base, and it's now a 6 to 3 game. Brian Ireland will take his first at bat of the season. Came on in relief of Alex Croto. He sends a line drive out to shallow center field. It touches down for a base hit and in from third base trots Anthony Mazzini with the second run of the inning. An RBI single for Ireland. So things tightening up here as it's now a six to four score. Still just one out in the inning. Tommy Thomas with a slow rolling ground ball to shortstop. They get the out at second base. The throw to first is there just in time. Tommy Thomas with a lot of speed, but a quick turn at second base, and just as quickly as the two runs come in to score for Milford, the double play ends the inning. But nonetheless, a pair comes home for the Scarlet Hawks. So as we head to the seventh inning, it is Mansfield six and Milford four here on coverage of Milford High School Baseball here on Milford TV. It is a two-run lead right now for Mansfield over Milford as we head into the top of the seventh inning. Will Kelleher leading it off against Brian Ireland, and he skies the first pitch he sees out into right center field, ranging over is Schuler. One pitch and one out here in the top of the seventh. A very quick two runs coming home to score in the bottom of the sixth inning for Milford. Looks like the potential for a big inning, but Tommy Thomas grounding into the inning ending double play. And now 
Now sharply hit to shortstop in and out of the glove of Wild. He won't throw. In safely at first base with another infield hit is Mike Arnold. So one on with one out. It's the second hit of the day for the Mansfield catcher. He singled back in the second inning, also walked and scored a run in the fourth. So officially a two for three day. He stands at first base now ahead of Matt Carafa, who has reached base three times, twice by way of a single. And back in the fifth inning, reached on an error by the third baseman. Pitch now to Carafa. This ball hit in the air out to shallow center field. Ranging in is Schuler. He can't get it. Went into the headlong dive, but they sling it to second base, and they'll get the force play there. So fortunate that that ball was hit so shallow. And that's the second time in the game we've seen Schuler have to range all the way in, basically to the edge of the infield dirt to field a pop-up. That really should be either the second baseman or the shortstop ranging out there to make that catch. But Milford helped out by the fact that Mike Arnold had to hang back towards the first base bag in case that ball was caught. So he ends up getting forced out at second. Two outs in the inning with now Carafa the runner at first base. Jared Collins, the hey, DH at the plate. Milford hoping to keep it, just a two-run deficit for the bottom half of the seventh inning. Ireland checks the runner at first base, now comes to the plate. This is a line drive out to shallow center field. It hangs up long enough this time for Schuler to make the catch for the out that ends the inning. So it will be a six to four score with Mansfield in the lead heading into the bottom of the seventh inning. Milford looking for a dramatic come from behind victory. We'll see if they can pull it off when we come back here on coverage of Scarlet Hawks baseball here on Milford TV. We have reached the bottom of the seventh inning. Milford bringing the bats to the plate that they'd like to see in this situation. Hitters two, three, and four. Drew Wild will lead it off. Trailing by a pair of runs. The first pitch into Wild misses for ball one. Mansfield will use their third pitcher of the game, bringing Michael Bowen in from shortstop to try to close this game out. As Wild slices the ball foul, it evens the count at one and one. It was Krikorian, the relief pitcher who came in to pitch that bottom of the sixth inning, allowed two runs on two hits after Evan Kershaw pitched the first five. The next pitch in from Bowen. Narrowly misses, and it's a 3-1 count. A walk would bring the tying run to the plate. Here's the pitch from Bowen, and it misses up high for ball four. Drew Wild works a leadoff walk. And Blake Hill will come to the plate representing the tying run. And for Drew Wild, you know he wants to perhaps atone for what was a costly base running miscue back in the bottom of the fifth inning. As Milford had runners at the corners with two outs, Wild caught leaning off of third base. He's caught in a rundown, eventually tagged out to end the inning. He now stands at first base. No outs in the inning, and a first pitch called strike into Blake Hill. Milford starting right fielder. He singled in his first at bat, has flown out twice to center field. Now chases an outside pitch to fall down in the count, nothing in two. You can see he wished he could change his mind about halfway through that swing. Hey, 
Bottom of the seventh inning, no outs in the inning. The tying run at the plate. As Bowen misses high with the pitch. Now one and two the count. Drew Wild leads off of first base. He holds the pitch too far outside. Doesn't get Hill to chase this time. Two balls and two strikes the count. As this pitch is tapped foul to the backstop. Jeff Basazi moves in from the on-deck circle to pick up the loose ball. As the lefty batter, Blake Hill, readies himself for the pitch against the righty, Michael Bowen. He spoils it foul. The count remains two and two. Defensive changes in this inning for Mansfield. Brandon Nevius moved over to shortstop to replace Bowen. Evan Blake into the game at second base as Bowen's next pitch misses too far outside and the count runs full. A 3-2 pitch coming up. The runner holds as a swing and a miss and Blake Hill strikes out. He's able to work his way back into the count, but ultimately Bowen is able to get him a big strikeout for the first out of the inning. Wild remains at first now for Jeff Basazi, who takes a pitch inside. Basazi has singled, walked, and struck out in the game. He's also stolen a base, and was also thrown out trying to score. Swings and misses to even the count at one and one. Now two balls and a strike. And you think about the two Milford players involved in this situation right here. Wild at first, Basazi at the plate. Both have been involved in base running mistakes that could have potentially led to run scoring situations had things ended up differently. Milford here trailing by a pair of runs. The next pitch into Pisazzi is hit high in the air, foul, and out of play. This game approaching two hours old. One ball and two strikes on Basazi. He swings and misses. He went after a high pitch and came up empty. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Michael Bowen after the leadoff walk. And now Milford down to their final out. The freshman Aiden Wild. The first pitch up over his head for ball one. Wild with his first hit as a varsity player back in the third inning. The 2-0 pitch in for a strike. None of the fans have left the field hoping for this late inning rally. Bottom of the seventh inning, two outs, and now a high drive, but well foul and out of play off the bat of Aiden Wild, that evens the count at two balls and two strikes, so now the Scarlet Hawks down to their final strike. Mansfield holding on to a two-run lead, up six to four. And the 2-2 pitch on the outside corner for a called strike three. Aiden Wild stares in disbelief at the plate. Now fires the bat away. Disappointed with the outcome of that at bat. Aiden Wild strikes out looking to end the ball game and Mansfield holds on for a six to four victory. And a credit to Michael Bowen after allowing that leadoff walk, he strikes out the next three Milford batters to end the game. 
So a bit of a wild opening game to this 2015 season on both sides. Some miscues around the infield and outfield making things interesting, but ultimately it is the Mansfield Hornets of the Kelly Rex division who were able to walk away with the 6-4 to four win. The victory goes to Evan Kershaw, who pitched the first five innings for the Hornets. The loss goes to Alex Croto of the Milford Scarlet Hawks, and Michael Bowen ends up notching the save in a game that lasted just about two hours long here at Fino Field this afternoon, so Milford drops their season opener. They fall to an 0-1 start on the season. Mansfield victorious here in their first game of the year, so they will start off the season with a record of 1-0. Milford will be right back to work on April 14th. They'll be on the road for their next two games. On the 14th, they'll play Foxborough in Foxborough with a 345 start. And they'll follow that up with an April 16th game on the road at Canton also at 345. Their next home game will come on April 21st when they take on the Oliver Ames Tigers. Always a dangerous team. And that will come again April 21st with an 11 a.m. start as that is during April vacation time. But that will wrap things up for our broadcast here this afternoon. For Rob O'Keefe, I am Tim Coet. Your final score one final time this afternoon. The Mansfield Hornets defeat the Milford Scarlet Hawks by a final score of 6-4. to four. This has been a presentation of Milford High School Athletics on Milford TV. So long, everybody.